Alrighty, hello and welcome to game two of the best of three between SML and, or Semper Magus Legion and Lucky or Luki and the Handsome Gardeners. Uh, joining me here is going to be Suru once again. So, hey guys. <laughs> welcome. Uh, so this game, how, what happened last game? I guess first. I feel like they got overconfident with the pucks lead that Aristic is thought he just could go in but in turn he just got crushed and had a couple misplays where he just dived in and had no follow-up and it just felt like Witch Doctor's impact wasn't felt as much throughout the rest of the game along with Enchantress mm -hmm. Viper really did just ruin like their momentum because it just shut down the Ench and Ench had no uh, kind of impact later on So then, hmm? they just need to tighten things up, you know. Just have better communication as a team. All right. So then, for SML, that early laning stage felt really disastrous for them. Uh, do you think it was uh, picks that made that happen, or was it just the the way they decided to lane it, or the way they played the lanes, or how did that go? I think Witch Doctor left the Ursa bottom versus the MK for too long, mm -hmm. and that let Ursa. Just get the, just get outplayed by the monkey king. The monkey king had levels, and he can just, just one v one anyone, you know. Mm -hmm. So it comes up to, him, then he just continue to mastery. So we really needed the witch doctor stun there to help Ursa uh, just get the procs on and just kill the witch doctor or the monkey king. He has no armor, you know. Yeah, yeah. Uh, so, <clears throat> Luki, this game, they take the Vengeful Spirit in the first round, and they go ahead and get rid of both the Spirit Breaker and the Viper, uh, denying three picks from the previous game from SML. But SML take the same... Wait, these aren't the same bands, precisely. The Centaur was in there last time, right? The Luna is consistent. The Wraith King was next phase? Yeah, the, the Wraith King was second phase. Radiant team are now so what do you think they thought... Ooh, all right. Yeah. I love the night pick. They're like, Nyx, you're not playing Ben's this game. <laughs> so I guess he's going to play uh, Ogre Magi instead. And Dagger Exor will be on the Visage. Now, I... You know Booker, right? Yes, I know Booker. All right. I have seen uh, people who are... Competent at Dota, like just absolutely wreck on Visage more than they could ever, more than they ever like do on any other hero. Like, you let them get that hero in, uh, in a draft, and they take it like twenty and one or something over the course of the game, where it's definitely more neutral for most heroes. And I feel like Visage players are just like that, <clears throat> generally because of the way that because people aren't familiar with Visage, right? And visage players are because there's the attack speed slow or it's actually a drain which is really frustrating to lane against and of course yes. there's the the kill steal spell um yes. with the the soul assumption the yes. grave cloak makes it really difficult for you to burst him down and he just takes all of your buildings with stupid birds but uh i i like this pick for them I feel like it's really strong in the laning phase where they suffered last game and is really good at disrupting the mid game if they do end up falling short in that laning phase, which they've shown they were really competent in doing. Does Booker often play Visage as a support or does he play mid Visage? Uh, he plays both. We'll see, we'll see where this Visage uh, plays out. Just to see if he's mid or support. Actually, Ogre's a, Ogre would be maybe a 4, right? Um, Ogre, I think, would be a 5 here with Visage on the 4. So it'd be like Dagger on Visage and Nyx on Ogre. Unless they have like a dedicated okay. Visage player, in which case it might be some other uh, swap up. And they have shown they're not afraid to swap up who's playing in which lane. Like, I've seen Hope for Humanity and Dardane both go mid and safe lane and off lane um, <clears throat> over the games that I've seen from SNL. So they're definitely comfortable swapping up their their positions if required to get some nice comfort heroes <clears throat> so the brewmaster though brewmaster 
I don't. I feel like we have all the specialty here <gasps> this time. But <laughs> Brewmaster is so much fun to watch and such a pain to play against, right? Because like he just disrupts everything you try to do in the mid game, and then you come late game, and he's he's in panda form more or in old form more often than he's in brew form. Have you ever played against an off green core brewmaster? Um, I hope I never do. <laughs> it is not fun, dude. He just... Oh god. <laughs> it's like, that it's like a 10 second cooldown or something, and he just he's, he's ulties again. Yeah, that actually sounds fucking horrendous. I would hate to play against that shit. There is a, there is a game where we played, and the brewmaster, like, we, we were behind, like, we had no racks. And what the brewmaster do, he just uses ult every 10 seconds and send his earth ruling towards our tower. We're gonna throw and try to finish it. It was not fun. Uh, just the earth brewing? To all of them, just try and distract them with the earth one to do uh, like, okay, damage. Okay. Got it. Got it. I mean, I would just send the the fire and water brewings and run away so I don't get caught. But I'm a little pansy support player, so. I'm the play Skyrim. <laughs> <laughs> Then you're an alpha, you're an alpha Skyrath player. Dude, Skyrath is the best hero in Dota. But Centaur is picked up here by SML. They did ban that out in the last game, and they're going to go ahead and pick it up for themselves this time. Um, there's probably an Orfeo hero, I would expect. And definitely their offlane. They are some tanky, tanky boys this game, though. Like They are. They are with Centaur decision. Over... It's going to be difficult to kill them off uh, and burst them down, but if anyone can do it, Kunko with uh, two Divine Rapiers and a couple crits can probably do it. Probably manage. <laughs> oh, this is going to be a fun game. <clears throat> Kunko mid's a really interesting one, I feel like, because melee heroes just lose to ranged heroes mid 95% of the time, right? But I feel like Kunko is not quite so so lopsided. Wait, did I just crash? I'll be right back. All right, uh, Suru did crash out, so we're for those listening in game. So we're gonna go ahead and just finish that out without him. Uh, bans we didn't mention the second phase at all. The PA and Drow were both banned for Luki and the Handsome Gardeners, and they take the Drow ban even though the even though they picked up the Venge, probably because they don't want to have it with the Visage Birds, um, and the PA probably just a uh, you know fuck you, we don't have to deal with that shit kind of hero like. It's not as strong as it used to be, but who really wants to play against a PA these days? And uh, the Storm and Faceless are banned out by SML. I've been playing a lot of Storm recently. I feel like he's he's getting better. Not great yet, but better. And uh, the Faceless Void, you know, always a really strong hero to have out. And is very good at disrupting that Centaur ult, the Stampede away. So good on them for going ahead and getting that in, in that phase. And Dragon Knight is going to be the pickup here for SML for their mid, I would presume. And they really are going all in on just the you cannot kill us as we walk at you style of gameplay, which leads to a lot of fights, leads to a lot of kills uh, in both directions a lot of times. So definitely a lot of fun to be able to watch that <clears throat> in this upcoming game. Especially, I mean, last game was action packed for different reasons. Like there was a lot of pick off heroes, but this time it's just going to be run at you heroes. Totally different styles of team fights constantly, or rather at least clashes constantly, if not full on team fights. And it's always hate exciting to play to go against us in the pub. <laughs> I'd hate playing against either of these teams in the pub, dude. <clears throat> Brewmaster, especially, like, fuck that hero. Man, but if they, if they hold out, it'll just be a 90 minute double divine rape here, comfort game. Oh, please, no. It's a best of three tonight. We still have another one after this. Feels bad. <laughs> all right all right just uh no 90 minute games plus but you know what happens happens mm -hmm. they're taking time on this victory <laughs> yeah what do you think uh kunkas could kunka be there for or he's probably their mid i feel like they, they see the dk they're like we can we can have kunka against dk like yeah it's a good matchup so they're looking for a four here in this pick. I think maybe they're looking for a four that could also be a mid if Semper change up their lanes. Maybe like a Marana. Maybe like the C. 
Ooh, there we go. Okay, never mind. Yeah, Kunko might be the four. So last time, I will say, I recall Sniper being put in the safe lane by Luki. Am I remembering correctly there? I don't recall that game. I don't remember. Yeah, I oh, oh, I would like to see like a really hard carry picked up for Luki. Just to... For SML? Maybe like uh, Spectre? They do have the heroes to support her in lane and keep her alive, even with the Brewmaster fucking shit up. Maybe a CK. Or, oh, oh, yep, they banned a CK. <laughs> um, so you said you wanted a really hard carry for SML, right? Yes, yeah, so because someone like in this kill these guys. Maybe, maybe TV or AM would be. Hmm. If they get the farm, you know. Yeah, so a Spectre was banned out. That is what Luki are afraid of. Uh, what about Luki? What do Luki need here as they come into their reserve time, figuring out their last pick? Do you think they need to change up what we were talking about with the lanes, or do you think they pick a support here, or how do you think they go? I feel like they're looking for a carry right now. You just need another carry. If Kunkka is, if Kunk is mid and Cypher is hard carry, then I'm completely wrong. So for a carry, I feel like they have a lot of really good team fight, uh, but they're they have good damage. They have good high ground push. Well, they have decent high ground push. Maybe they just need like a Sven, like another run at you hero. On on, on Luki. Yeah, on yeah. Side, right. Pick up like well, a blink BKB Echo and just blink on people. I thought, I thought you were gonna say SML gives a Sven, and that's like the tankiest lineup in the world. Oh, but it's the life steal out of Luki. So a lot of a lot of strength here is on SML. Life stealer definitely likes to play against that. Although the Dragonite, of course, not quite tanky for the same reasons. Doesn't have quite the same issues against him. I feel like life stealer like, makes sense for them. It's a good pickup against the Centaur, but maybe Brewmaster will be a life stealer bomb hero later on when he gets a blink and gets initiate on people. Mm -hmm. Yeah, their delivery methods are a little bit lacking, but they do have the Venge swap in a pinch. And like that's you say, true. the blink that's on true. Brew. Maybe a blink on Kunkka later in the game as well. But SML, they're down to the last 10 seconds of their reserve time. You said you were looking for maybe a TB or some other like really strong hard farming carry. How about a Morphling? There we go. It's the hero. Oh man, if Morphling plays well and just turns into these heroes, into Kunkka, X's the enemy, and just... And then rages and throws out a bunch of shrapnel charges. Oh, Plus the mischance out of Brewmaster. Ugh. Let's not hope this more. Let's hope this more funny is an Arteezy or something. <laughs> hey, hey, Arteezy could eventually learn Morphling if he tried. <laughs> Let's see who is so who was the mid player? Oh, Long Song. Yes, the sniper. Let's see how the sniper plays mid. Yep, yep. So that'll be that. And uh, Occam was their off lane player. So. Pretty, I mean, as predictable as the lanes could be for Luki once that last pick came out. Um, Hope for Humanity is going to be the safe lane, Dardane mid, so same deal on SML. Uh, they are going to put the Visage in the top lane with Orfeo, it looks like, though. Um, do you think Ogre is going to be enough against uh, the Brewmaster for Morphling? Who's, who do you think is going to go with the Brew? Uh, is it going to be Kunk or is it Venge? Mad Mardigan went in the off lane position or off lane support position last time. So the Kunka. Yeah. I think Ogre will, will do a decent job. Mm hmm. Make a really <coughs> on. I do like Kunka's items though. Can I see those in this view? I don't think I can look at what they are. Not yet, but we'll see in a moment. Alright, so as we get here into game two, <clears throat> we can do a quick reintroduction of the players, just in case anybody missed it the first time, or has joined since, as we get up here. And we are going to see for SML in the safe lane, uh, if we go over here, there's going to be Morphling, play, picked up by Hope for Humanity. Meanwhile, in uh, in mid lane, we will see that Dragon Knight, picked up by Dardane. Off lane, we'll have Orfeo playing on the Centaur War Runner. And Dagger Extor on the Visage. Nyx going into the safe lane with the five position Ogre Magi. Meanwhile, for Luki Boys, we do have Occam's Chainsaw playing on the Brewmaster. 
with uh, in the off lane with Mad Morgan joining up there on the support. Kunka mid lane will be the sniper, Long Schlong Madon, who is not standing on their TZ ward spot. Plus, or their TZ block spot. Come on, right here. But uh, <clears throat> Business Cat will be going into the safe lane on uh, Vengeful Spirit, supporting Cedar Boy, picking up the Life Stealer. What are you drawing out here? Give me one moment, real quick. All right. Uh, does look like both teams are looking to try to make some sort of movements in there towards the off lane runes, but yeah, neither one confident enough to actually go for it. Although, looks like Occam's Chainsaw is considering walking up the hill here. <coughs> he does have the Drunken Brawler level one, so he's going to be able to get that first hit crit, but not going to have the mischance from, uh, from Drunken Haze. So just standard bounties picked up. Actually, not even standard. Occam's Chainsaw actually they were able to force them out. So Occam's Chainsaw is going to get ensure that they do get two bounty runes here in the top lane. Three and one going the way of Lukey Boys. And uh, I feel like mid lane is going to be pretty stable. Uh, top lane probably similar, but bottom lane I feel like that's going to be where the action is. There's more stuns here and more damage like burst available overall so i don't know how i feel about cedar boy's decision to, to skip stout shield early on uh he, he, oh i see just getting the quelling blade he just takes full damage from uh, yeah yeah hit. he has zero armor so that's full damage yeah i mean probably was just trying to rely on his feast in order to ensure that that's not quite as impactful but yeah, I definitely see where you're coming from on that. So meanwhile, on top lane, we are actually going to see a lot more damage coming out than bottom. Occam's Chainsaw does have plenty of regen. Uh, I guess uh, a Fire Blast was used on him, maybe? Or he was just right-clicked a bunch? Oh, there's another Fire Blast. A couple right-clicks. Yeah. Nick's actually, doing, Nick's actually doing quite a good job of harassing up here with uh, the two melee enemies. Looks like in bottom lane, Orleo's going to take quite a bit of damage for... At least a little bit, but again, he also has plenty of regen. There is so much regen in these lanes, except for Dagger, who only brought fairy fires. But, uh, or Leo. Oh no, Business Cat, miss it. Business Cat misses the stun, and that's going to be a stomp. But level two, there was return uh, leveled from Orfeo, so he wasn't able to finish off the Venge with a double edge. <clears throat> Darnane and Longschlon trading off their neck and neck right now at six and two on the last hit and denies. What were we saying? I'm interested in that. It I'm interested in this Venge. Or the Visage went second point into Gravekeeper. Gravekeeper into, into his passive. It's their sole assumption. It will uh, make him pretty uncomfortable, I think, though. Yeah. And oh, then. actually, how did that happen? All right, Longschlong actually kills off uh, Dardane here in mid lane. Just with shrapnel and headshot, no boots, no nothing. That was, I was not expecting that result. Did you see what happened there? I think he just let the, he stood in the shrapnel charges for the long, relied on his dragon blood for the regen. Mm. Off. So there's gonna be now uh, an ignite and a fire blast here out onto Kunkka. Mad Mardigan is taking a lot of damage. Hopefully Manny does have his Q, but probably doesn't want to use it to go under. Oh, he is gonna use it to go under tower. Gonna to get the right click off. Is able to switch over to strength, but isn't even needing to do so. They're hitting off. They're hitting Occam's chainsaw quite a bit, and yeah, now the Drunken Haze goes out. So not gonna have any more right clicks available. But he's gonna get ignited too and take quite a bit of damage from that. Uh, meanwhile, so the lightning stage is way stronger this time around for SML. Mm, yeah, uh, they they spilled in mid, but yeah, definitely feels like they should be able to dominate these side lanes pretty pretty easily. <clears throat> Especially like they're keeping uh, Cedar Boy and Business Cat back pretty far. They're saved by the grace of all the regen they brought to lane, but it is difficult for them to actually lane effectively against this combo. Like, you only have two magic missiles, two and a half, with the wand. Maybe you get a third, and then you're sort of spent till you go back home. Hope for humanity, meanwhile, it's going to be forced to uh, waveform out. No X yet on Kunkka, not level three, so I'm not able to hold him in place for that. 
Does look like Long Schlong Madon is going to go for the Midas first. Holy. And he's going to have it very quickly as well. He's only uh, 700 gold away from that. I think he just knows he's, he has to carry this game again. He has to just make space by yeah. the ice. And then... Yeah, DD picked up top for Dardane. Yeah, that does feel like how it's got to go. And Sniper can do it a lot better than Puck, honestly. Like, Puck is... That's true. Puck is a very strong mid-game hero, but you need to... I don't know. You, you can't be the one that scales on a Puck, I feel like. You use your abilities and that's it. You can't right-click. You can, but not enough. Yeah. Maybe with a plus 50 damage, but you have to give up the like mid-game magic burst for it. and I don't know. It just doesn't feel strong. Dardane taking a, a fair amount of the, the harass here out of shrapnel and gonna go for more but the breed fire reducing the damage on the shrapnel and the right clicks but actually the ult's ready dardane's gonna die once again getting that ult uh up we're getting level six before dardane had his really huge there for him and a lot of that came from just not moving to go get runes and <clears throat> that one early kill He's, he, he seems like he just dominates the mid lane every time. Yeah, he seems like a pretty strong mid player. But, uh, Occam's Chainsaw and Mad Mardigan coming here to the trees, looking for hope for humanity, who is sitting here at 400 HP, by the way. Ignite Fire Blast coming out into Mad Mardigan, tries to get a, uh, a Tidebringer onto Hope for Humanity, but not able to quite hit him on the edge of that. And Hope just casually sitting here with... God, that, that just would frighten me so much. I'd be at least 600 HP right now, but I guess that's why I'm not a Morphling <laughs> player. Uh, interesting. So, uh, Assassinate used in mid lane to attempt to denied. get the last hit, but it gets denied. Yeah. Um, however, Midas is finished at six minutes. Jeez. He wants um, Midas. He wants Midas. Yeah, it recognizes the dagger is coming on the way because he's not showing a bottom lane for a while. Even has a stack put up here. <laughs> Jesus. That shit is fucked. But, uh, <clears throat> Hope for Humanity having a little bit of trouble, like, last hitting consistently, or at least I'd say he's having a little bit of trouble last hitting consistently, like, he's not clearly from the CS charts, but I feel like he should be with the, uh, yeah. with that, uh, with that Drunken Haze on him all the time. And now he's actually gonna get caught up here, he's gonna take, uh, actually he's not going to take the damage bonus from Tidebringer because that uh, was a melee, was a, an allied creep that he was denying there. Dardane going ahead and using his level 6 to go ahead and push in this mid tower, but I don't know if it's going to be sufficient really. Sniper is pretty weak right now because he did go for the uh, for the Hand of Midas, so only has a little Super bit of extra attack speed on him. But even it under old form... This is killed by the Dragon Breath. Oh, did he? Oh, yeah. He is going to salve up, but that does mean that his damage is going to do a lot less. That's going to be a dead Morphling in top lane, and Nyx might go down as well here. He has an Ignite. He's going to go ahead and use that, but he's out of mana, so Occam's Chainsaw is going to survive. So, did that damage... Did that... Did the Thunderclap damage him during wave form? You're invulnerable during wave form, right? I think I think he he targeted right behind him, so it, it was just like he got out of wave form just as the, the clap went down. Ah, okay. Uh, Kunka actually going down in top lane as the rotation comes back from Hope for Humanity. I was looking for potentially a kill in mid lane, but that did not happen. Kunka so. didn't want to go shrine. He let he let Brugo solo. Like I'm just gonna get experience. I paid for it. Hmm. So another salve here for Orfeo or for Cedar Boy rather, who is working towards his armlet now after picking up his phase, but I mean he's had to fly in so much regen for himself even on a life stealer, and a lot of that just comes down to the way the lanes are. Another dive in top lane, Jesus. So Nyx and Hope for Humanity having a fantastic lane at this point. And uh, Tread's finished up here on Morphling. Looks like he's going to get a casual ring of health before he moves into whatever his next item is, and you know Nyx has boots. Happy support has boots. <laughs> Dardane. Doing the, doing the magic one first too. 
Yeah, Magic Wand is probably doing a lot here in this lane. Able to spam the Ignite like so much more with that. <clears throat> There's going to be a Fire Blast followed by an Ignite onto Occam's Chainsaw, who does have the Brew or the Primal Split available at this point. There's rotation coming in mid lane. There's going to be a central used as well. Darnane diving under tower, using the dragon tail ranged form as well as throwing down that breathe fire. Now dagger exter just going to secure that kill with the uh, soul assumption. Business cat TP's in, but I don't know if that's really the best option here. He's going to start getting right click down. Another soul assumption coming through. Dardane, one more right click will be sufficient. Actually, dagger exter gets the final right click and is going to go ahead and TP out two for nil. And this tower is at least going to take some damage, though it's certainly not going to go down. Dardane's got to back up because he is very low. I'm ready for it. This is Jank. Successful. Yeah, I mean, he was playing pretty safe. Like, he was out under here, but it was the center all I think, that made the difference. Mm -hmm. So there's yeah, going right. to be the Primal Split used in top lane. Hope for Humanity, however, does have plenty of time to swap up into Strength form. It's going to get stunned one more time with a rock, but that's going to be all that she wrote here. So Long Shlong Madon does go down, but still forming up really well. Has FaZe, has Midas, has Aquila almost finished here all at 10 minutes. So denying the Invis rune. Sure. If you're not going to use it. It's DK for dying, though. He's, he's definitely gone net worth up. He's had a much better game this time around than last game, for sure. Yeah, he's managing to hold his own in mid a lot better. SF, though, like, when you do lose early, like, end up end up going down early or not getting a whole lot of CS because your enemy has 70 auto attack damage at level 1 with his items. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, it's like double I mean, your damage, yeah. right? So, double for sure. Not a fun lane to play against. I feel like it was a really classic matchup, but <clears throat> I guess it favors Puck these days with as much damage as he, she, it starts with uh, Long Shlong is able to spot out the rotation this time. <laughs> As Dagger tries to come in with the with the birds, and he's just gonna run away like he sees everyone coming. I'm like, I'm out of here. I would, I would maybe strap him and be like, Hey, I see you. Go away. So there's the stampede used. Looks like it was just used bottom to get uh, Orfeo away, but there was a little bit of potential rotation in mid lane trying to get into the tower to make something happen off that as well. Uh, Nyx is just standing in the area for the time being, zoning out enemy supports and trying to make sure that things are good. Um, Mad Mardigan puts the sentry down here. I guess maybe he was expecting the vision to be under the tower, even though it was... I mean, there's plenty of dire vision around here, uh, covering the whole area, but don't have this one, unfortunately, for, uh, unfortunately for Mad Mardigan. <clears throat> it's always sad when you use a sentry early game and don't, uh, don't actually get a ward with it, because it's like, mm -hmm. it takes you forever to get the next sentry at this point in the game. It's like you just wasted 100 gold, you know, but... Yeah, wasted, like, a tenth of your net worth. So there's going to be the X combo here out onto Dardane. They do uh, do miss the Torrent coming out afterwards because Dardane was a little aggressive, but there is still going to be... Uh, wow, he's doing a lot of... How much is the attack speed bonus on that? I feel like Long Shlong Madon is doing a lot faster attack speed than I'm used to, but I guess it's because of the Midas. But... Uh, yeah, that is going to be a kill here, uh, as well as even a little bit of control onto Ogre, Ooh, though it's not going to make a huge difference. What, look at what the sniper is building up. Yeah, he's building Necro. It's, uh... I don't know, there have been constant work. fights, I forgot to talk about it. <laughs> Bottom lane, Hope for Humanity is going to wand up and switch back into Strength Form, switch back into Aji to go ahead and cast that Adaptive Strike, finish off the Ventral Spirit, and back into Strength to... Well, back into Aji, back into Strength. He is, is super playing by now. the end... Uh, and actually with the right click there. Oh my god. Just playing by the very skin of his teeth here. Hope for Humanity actually just dominating in the bottom lane. Long Shlong Madon is also going to go down to uh, Dardane. SML coming in to assist with that. Or not SML. Uh, Nyx coming in to assist with that. And top lane now it's Orfeo versus Occam's Chainsaw. So Occam's is getting a blast this time. Um, what do you think is the purpose of that here on the Brewmaster? Like, what's the purpose of the... Oh, I think he just wants to make his team tanker, but... It's, it's so hard right now. Because he's mm. a brew, and they have no initiation. So there is... It's hard to really go in for them. Mm. I, I would like to see this, like, do arcane boots into blink. For brew? Yeah, for brew. You see, they're behind right now, and... 
him getting a blast, he says he's just not farming for a little bit. So bottom line, they're going to go in onto Mad Mardigan. There's going to be some right clicks as well as a couple bird stuns to hold him down. There's going to be a sniper ult here onto Hope for Humanity, but he's able to get enough strength out of his uh, out of his morph before he goes down. Now he's going to blink for uh, wave for him forward here onto Cedar Boy, trying to finish him off, but now he has to back up because of SC Business Cat TPing in. Meanwhile, up here there was some uh, skirmishing between Long Slong Madon and uh, <clears throat> and Visage, but not going to end up with either player coming out uh, with a kill on that meanwhile in top lane we will see brewmaster spill the uh stampede was used earlier i didn't see if stampede was used when they were fighting it must have been because they didn't use it yeah it must have been used like just before they were fighting vengeful is struggling to get to level six right now yeah well should be able to yeah, they see everyone top, so eventually we'll be able to sap the lane XP for a little bit. But they're going to go, they see Hope for Humanity up here, and uh, Cedar Boy's like, nah, you can have that rune, it's okay. And actually, it looks like we're going to have uh, a TP up, oh, a TP at home for uh, Cedar Boy. So top lane is going to be given up. However, Occam's is still sitting over here. Primal Split is down. There's going to be the X out under Dardane, but not really going to be used to try to get a combo off, just delay. The vision game is so much stronger for SML too. They're playing great with their wars right now. Yeah, and even with the attempted Dior's not going out. So Shadowblade actually just came out for Dardane. He's able to get in here. Has the old form. Now the Centaur was just available again. Magic Missile comes out to stop the Centaur X as well. So he's going to get pulled back, probably into a torrent. Yep, the torrent goes. And that's going to be the end of Orfeo. But everyone else does get out safely with a four-man rotation from uh, Loki Boys. <coughs> so... A little bit of an overextension for sure to like get under the tower, but at that point, getting everyone out safely, bit of a win. And meanwhile, Hope for Humanity is going to take the bottom tower. And you step for mid. Yeah, that was uh, the Shadow Blade forward, correct? Yes. Shadow Blade, you deep. So now in top lane, it looks like Lukey boys are going to push into this tower. However, it looks like SML think they can defend or Feo. However, he's going to get torrented and boated right away. He does not have an ult available, has already used his stomp. He's just going to go down. Looks like he's going to try to walk back, but no one able to come in and help. Hopefully, many actually coming. They are being really aggressive right now. There's going to be the... Uh the X holding in place, waveforms, and doesn't quite come in, but Dagger actually is here, so that's going to be the double stun plus the uh, plus the soul assumption to finish off Ventral Spirit. Cedar Boy goes down as well, Hope for Humanity finishing him out, and now we do have the Brew Split trying to kill off Hope for Humanity, but uh, Hope for Humanity is totally fine for the time being. Dardane comes in with the Shadow Blade, wants to come in onto Occam's, and he's going to go ahead and stun him up. Hold him in place. Hope for Humanity, though, is not going to come into this fight. Looks Oh, he is going to... Holy crap, that's a... Ooh. Wait, he just... Did he die to creeps? Died to creeps? He must have died to creeps. The creeps just attacked him. I was going to say that's really freaking aggressive, going down to 0 H or 1 HP, <laughs> and uh, he does go down to a creep, so... I believe he aggroed them when he waveformed them, I think. He's trying to right-click. He, he right-clicked, so... He was right-clicking, so when he waveformed, they just threw the aggro. Mmm... So, they do have the level 1 Necronomicon finished on Sniper, however, and it looks like Business Cat is going to go for the Arcanes on Venge, since they don't have any other source of mana regen on their team, so are going to be able to have that. Cedar Boy has his armlet finished, and after Vlad's, the Blink is about halfway, or two-thirds of the way done here for Occam's Chainsaw, so he's going to go for a Blink after the Vlad's. <clears throat> but everything that Lukey boys do right now is completely spotted out by SML. Like, they know exactly what's up. So if you are Lukey boys right now, how do you come back into this game? I'd be like, if I was Venge, I'd be like, hey, Konka, need some help. I need some sentry wards, because I can't do everything by myself. Mm. Like, she is... Going for the, where's she going right now? Where's Venge going? Uh, getting the arcane boots, but might be death. There's the shadow blade. Yeah, they know she's invisible. Not even thinking what Earth. So I'm not even like just instinctively using the dragon tail. Just considering whether to use it eventually does. Holding on the low ground. And... So, so, so what Loki boy has to do is that they have to create a line around their their jungle. They need a ward to safely. 
and just create like a safe space where if they're coming, we know they're coming, and have to make sure they don't see us farming. Like, and they just need to accomplish that first because everyone in the the top shrine, like they see everything, you know, they know where to move, you know, who's not there, who's who's there, and what they what they can do, you know, they know what the limitations are, you know. That's the one knows they can just farm their enemy jungle safely. I think. All right. Well, it does look like they're at least getting some of that done, as they have the uh, the positioning to do so. Long Shlong Madon potentially going to be aggressed on by Dagoric Sword, but he thinks better of it. Uh, he has the Atos though. Like quite a bit of farm here on this four position, vengeful not vengeful uh, visage. Nick's even able to get uh, a drums almost finished already at 20 minutes into the game on Ogre. So Dardane is going to get pulled back. The central is burned, and that is going to be sufficient for him to get pulled out since there isn't any vision at the time being. There was the blink forward, but without any dust or anything, uh, not going to use the... Oh, actually, they might use the Lifestealer bomb now. <clears throat> Wait. Okay, Lifestealer... It took the thing away, but Lifestealer was still inside the green panda. Nyx is going to go down for that. Now Sniper's coming in, has the shrapnel, or Feo taking a lot of damage. She's going to get swapped back in by Business Cat. That will be the end of the... <clears throat> Excuse me, of the centaur. Hope for humanity. Big kills. Hmm? Some big kills, you know. They're, they're yeah, more disciplined. Some of these enemies are uh, more disciplined and not going like that. Yeah, and now, uh, Luki boys, they're going to get their second tower of the game. Here, both towers coming down in the last, like, two minutes, right? Three minutes? Atos out on Nakunka, as well as presumably double stun. Nope, they're actually just going to pull back with the X into the assassinate and the torrent uh the familiars are going to oh they take a lot of damage wow. to uh benj's w i did not realize that is pure that's, that's what benj did that goal. so level one familiars have 550 hp i feel like the venge like yeah they're 550 hp that feels like it did way more damage than it should. Because it's only 100 damage. I think Sniper got it, because I saw a purple 400. Ah, okay, okay, okay. Got it. Got Vision and Sniper got him. That makes sense. Um, Hope for Humanity is able to finish off Business Cat as he tries to ward up here. Does get his ward off, though. So, SML... It, so we talked about, you know, how Luki boys come back into this game. And they're managing to farm their jungle pretty stably. If They don't have the whole vision line put up, but they're trying to get that happening. Uh, mm -hmm. But if you're SML, like, how do you ensure that you don't throw? You don't throw. I think they're, they're, doing, they're, they're doing a great job right now. They're being defensive. We're not being outwardly aggressive like SML is. And mm -hmm. they're, just, they're just playing pretty no. disciplined right now. No, for Who's SML. A, for SML? Yeah. Oh, SML. Sorry, my bad. Yeah, if you are SML right now, how do you how do you close out this game and not give it up after securing the early now uh, the early lead? I, I think they just need itemize better. Uh, DK is going Milner instead of BKB or another tank item because he is not very tanky. He just has a shadow blade and it's for levels and it's passive. Morphling, he's getting bigger. He just needs more farm. He need to play the farming game. For a little bit better and just itemize. It seems like just has the blink in Vanguard. Oh, is he really that far behind? He's, he's got most of, or half of the blade mill as well. I think he's been deferring a lot of farm to the Visage and, yeah. and the Ogre as well, who has a drums finished alongside Kunkka, but the 5 has the drums and the Visage has the eight, or and the 4 has the Atos instead of just the 4 having the drum. It's going to be a bit of aggression here in top lane. Dardane taking quite a bit of damage from the Primal Split as well as the just general right clicks out of Cedar Boy. And he's going to be able to Shadow Blade out of range of the uh, of the Hurl Boulder as he gets stampeded to safety. <coughs> Dust use, but he's already long gone. But yeah, it looks like everybody has sort of stabilized, just staying alive and farming up. Um, so if if both teams continue this, let's just farm our sides of the map and don't die sort of play style, who wins out out of that? I 
Mm, it's so hard because you, if you look at a net worth, Morphling is double the double the net worth of Life Stealer, which is pretty intense, you know. Even Brewmaster has higher net worth. I think I think definitely SML has like the, the tools to just farm more faster in a speed head. All right. Well, three kills. Wait, how did that? How did Sniper die at the end of that? Did he get uh, blinked on by Centaur? Centaur? Yeah, Centaur okay. after round and stunned him. All right. So able to get a, a couple of kills across the map for SML, but Sniper does go down. Or uh, not for SML, but for Lukey Boys. But Sniper does go down in exchange, so not clean kills, unfortunately, for them. But they're going to go ahead and push into this tier two anyway, because they feel like they're strong enough to do so. There's going to be a double stun here for Morfeo. Does still have the stampede, but there's four heroes. Going to have to use that stampede right away. Business Cat not able to get the magic missile off. Not able to get the vision or the positioning, but he is maybe looking for a bit of a swap. He is going to use that swap. Spend send the magic missile out on Morfeo. Not going to be able to get that off before the birds finish him. And now SML have all their heroes here, so maybe they're going to go for a push. Knowing that Sniper and Venger down. Morphling does have uh, Lincoln Sphere. I was really confused because it's like Brewmaster. What? No, no, it's Morphling. Yeah. I haven't uh, cast this hero enough to be like familiar with how that renders. Just make a rush play and then push. Oh, hero of the smoke. All right. this. Smoke to a pick off to a Roche, you think? Oh, they're smoking into Roche. This seems... Maybe they get it, but it seems really, really risky to me. However, Sniper is showing bottom lane now, so they should be more comfortable with it, I guess. Yeah, they're going to go for the Roche place, so... Just as you say, that's what they need to do. They have it up. Uh, Aegis picked up by Hope for Humanity. And... That is 25.50. There are runes up, and those are going to get grabbed here in bottom by Visage, who is running towards them. How is the sniper farm going? He has a Mjolnir, is working towards a, uh, a Hurricane Pike now. What do we have? Blink Dagger, Radiance. Okay, how? What is what is the Radiance like on Brew? It's just another form of DPS and mischance, you know? I think the who has the aura? The Earth or Earth has the radiance. Yeah, the aura. Earth holds the radiance, and then the Fire Panda has its own <laughs> radiance aura. Just this farm efficiency and maybe the mischance, even though it's only seventeen percent. But maybe an AC would be better. An AC or a Shadow Blade, Silver Edge. Him. Mm. Quick question, real quick. Um. Can you use a Helm of the Dominator on Necro, Necro Book minions? Well, there's going to be some aggression here top lane real quick onto Dardane, who is going to get dusted up, so he has to turn out of his Shadow Blade, and that's just going to be a quick kill. Uh, nice, strong uh, gank play there. But... I actually do not know. I th think you can. Yeah, I think so as well. Lincoln's there being popped by a, a quick assassinate. Because in, in the, the tooltip for him, well, there does not exclude any... Ooh, it's like half HP. Yeah, you can hold... Interesting, because the assassinate is slower. It's a no so I have been told by our uh, assistant, our lovely Vanna White, that no, you cannot dominate... Uh, you cannot dominate Necrobook creeps. Thanks for the, the bad news, Max. <laughs> <laughs> but Longshlong has finished up his Hurricane Pike, depending on whether he wants to combine that with his Aquila or not. And, okay, it looks like we're going to see, is that an F Blade or is that a... Yes, it's an F Blade. All right, F Blade is coming out for Hope for Humanity. So that's that's going to be some yeah some slaughterage. <clears throat> Still though, build it up for it. Comes with going for the ninety minute game. He has the crits in the tab. All right, so it's going to be a late night tonight. Uh, unless SML win, 
Because then they've already got the... Wait, that was... Oh, right. Okay. The visage was outside. I just saw a bunch of heroes together. I assume they were together. Nah, Dagger's just ganking alone. But it looks like he's going to get uh, killed for it. Not able to survive the five-man rotation down here for him. Damn, that was a quick response. But that does mean this tower goes down. He was just making space. He's totally happy with that death. Damn. Hope for Humanity attacks so fast right now. Now the Stampede is used. Still right-clicking out on the Cedar Boy. But with the... I mean, with... Yeah, damn. With that uh, bloodlust, yeah. yeah, it's uh, a lot of attack speed on on Morphling right now. Hope for Humanity just chewing through heroes. However, this is a risky push up the high ground, I feel like. They do still have the Aegis, so... Okay, they're going to go for it. There's going to be the combo, but not quite going to get the... Uh... Oh, man. Oh, oh. I was going to say, not going to... Okay, there's the shrapnel coming out though, and also he's more back into his own here. I guess swap back. That's all the A. Just gonna use wave for him all through all of them. Still right clicking everybody to death. Occam's chainsaw might go down here before hopefully many does, and he will. And now he's gonna go on to Mad Mardigan, but he's gonna get controlled up by. Oh, what was that? Oh, that was the uh, the dragon's breath. Oh, it must have been the uh, the Milner proc. So hopefully humanity is now the only one alive. Uh, who's currently in the base, but he's going to take out Occam's Chainsaw so quickly right now. Now there's a buyback from Vengeful Spirit. Uh, he just but he's, lived forever. He yeah. just lived forever. Turning into Sniper and then everyone else. And now he's going to go in. Does not have... Oh, it doesn't matter. I was going to say he doesn't have the Ethereal Blade for two seconds, but he just blasts her with that Adaptive Strike. So now Hope for Humanity, totally happy to just more full Agi at this point and right-click a bunch of creeps, right-click a tower down to death and that's actually gonna be gg called uh yeah lucky boys decide they can't take this one anymore and that's gonna be uh two zero in favor of sml tonight and here we thought we'd be up for another two hours i know right it was there the possibility was there you know but sml is really just they're like we're, we're throwing mid guys we're, we're throwing mid game we have to tighten it up and they just push mid or you know push top yeah and picked just, up that ages just... like you said End of the game. Man, Morphling was such a strong pick for them, I feel like. Ended up doing all the work in the world. But... So GG, man. GG to SML, man. They just did their job. GG indeed. So, I've been Knifehand, joined by Siri tonight. You can watch these in the client on the 82L Season 17 ticket or on Twitch at twitch.tv slash Knifehand. And uh, hope you guys enjoy. I'll see you next time.